The federal government will today commence the evacuation of about 5,500 Nigerians, including students stranded in Khartoum and other cities in Sudan. To facilitate the repatriation, the government has released 150 million naira for hiring 40 buses to convey its desperate citizens from Sudan to Cairo in Egypt. The chairman of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Abika Dabiri Erewa, confirmed on Tuesday that the payment had been made, noting that the evacuees would take off on Wednesday morning, that's early this morning. Also, Nigeria's leading airline, Airpeace, has also expressed urgent determination to evacuate stranded Nigerians from Sudan at no cost. Joining us on the show this morning to discuss the evacuation of Nigerians stranded in Sudan is Alan Oyema, Chief Executive Officer of Airpeace. Welcome to the morning show. Well, quickly, when we had the uh, issues in South Africa, you have to evacuate Nigerians. When uh, there was COVID, you have to evacuate Nigerians from India and elsewhere. You keep doing this. And yet this same country has not deemed it necessary to give you national honor. What motivates you? Now you are saying you want to help Nigeria evacuate people from Sudan. On this program last week, uh, Professor Bola Yakinyemi said, oh, I, I, I look forward to Alan Oyema helping to evacuate Nigerians, but they have to pay him. What motivates you to keep giving? Well, um to me, it's even a privilege, uh, I mean, to be allowed to contribute my quota to my country. I, I'm a, I, in fact, I'm a good adherent of what can you do for your nation and not what your country can do for you. So I thought that Nigeria is a country of about 378 ethnic nationalities. This is supposed to be our strength. The diversity we have today is an envy to all. Uh, it, it pains me that we have not been able to weave the country together uh, in over 60 years of our independence. So it pains me. So whatever I have to do to encourage people to come together, you know, to promote unity and at the same time encourage broad nationalism as against ethnic and religious nationalism which we have in this country. That is why I do it. I do it because I love this country. I believe we could be better than what we are having now. 378 ethnic nationalities. This is a source of strength. Meanwhile, we are not harnessing that. Instead, this blessing God has given us has become an albatross of a kind, and it pains me. So at all times, I like using my God's given blessings to see how I could help my country. It's not about evacuation alone. I laid down my life in the Niger Delta for this country. To me, to date, that is my greatest service to this nation because Boko Haram would have been a child's play. But I laid down my life and uh, got Niger Delta sorted and today everybody's enjoying People have forgotten all that. So a lot of people are talking about uh, my intervention during evacuation, during the COVID time, Thailand, uh, India, Malaysia, Indonesia, because Nigerians, we are destroying our embassies over there and I felt that was a great disservice to the image of this country and I sent in my jets to go and bring them back home during COVID. I, I feel personally honored to even to be allowed to do that. So it's not a publicity stunt because I've been doing it right from secondary school to the university, trying to uh, do things. Uh, my own activi activism is centered on trying to bring Nigeria together because I believe um, it's something that we should all be proud of. However, it pains me that my gesture has turned and has started causing some kind of uh, problems everywhere in the social media. Um, people are trying to bring ethnic angle into it. For those who are supporting me, the Igbos who are rooting for me that an Igbo man is going to do this, do that, please stop. And for other um, people from other tribes in Nigeria other than Igbo who have something or the other t or one one or two things to say about his stop is a Nigerian thing. It's not Igbo, it's not Yoruba, it's not Hausa. I don't want um, a good gesture to be turned into ethnic tobacco. It, it pains me. Well, it makes well me uncomfortable said. to the extent that I might, not do, I might not do this again because I want to promote unity, not to cause disunity Absolutely. with my gestures.
Absolutely. And I do hope that these um, you know, talks would not discourage you from doing good work in Nigeria. We need more Nigerians like you to do more you know, in terms of uh, social responsibility, helping out where needed. But I'd like to ask you, I want to assume that you're working at least with some form of support or collaboration with the Foreign Affairs Office of Nigeria. What kind of government support have you had since you made the offer to help to evacuate Nigerians from Sudan? And when is the time frame? And finally, in terms of that question for Nigerians who might be watching from Sudan, how do they access? You already have the numbers set in, or how do they access this service you're giving for free? Okay, um, I've been on the phone with the government officials. I've spoken with the Foreign Affairs Minister two days ago, and um, I've spoke, I spoken with uh, the Nigeria's ambassador to Egypt, uh, uh, who is uh, the one covering Sudan too. I've spoken with them, and this morning I was on phone to the DG of uh, NEMA, the National Emergency Some Forgotten Authority or something. I've spoken with him, and uh, we are planning to deploy on Friday. I wanted to do it today, if possible, but uh, I was told it would take two days before they get to Egypt from uh, Sudan by road. The last night they told me the buses had left, but uh, it would take two days. I wanted to deploy this night. Um, so I'll be deploying on Friday, uh, and maybe on Thursday night I might send about three jets out uh, to Egypt, uh, if possible, I just pray no country will delay us with overfly permit issues so that we can get there on time and we'll start moving our people immediately. I may send in about three planes at a time. To ask, so, all this what so you. So, the evacuation will take place. It will start on Friday. Okay. So, all this what you've always done, is it that? with no imputes from them, it's just you doing it of your own accord, putting yourself up on the line for it, you know, because this is national service and this is heroism when you look at it, you know. So this one, you're deploying three jets, are they gonna pay you for it or it's just your own volition, what you can do back for the country you love? I told them, and just I, I, as you must have read in the media, it's free of charge. They don't pay you anything, no recost to nothing from the federal government. It's just you giving back. <laughs> yes, I've never asked anybody to give me a dime, and nobody has offered me. Well, Mr. Mr. Yema, our main subject is Sudan, right? Evacuation of Nigerians that are stranded, and your contribution to help stranded Nigerians out of Sudan. But let's talk about the uh, airline industry. There's so much there, you know, your association, Airline Operators of Nigeria, of which you are vice chairman, has been talking about ease of doing business, you know, government making things easier within the aviation industry, and then the threat from, you know, uh, Ethiopian Airlines with regard to uh, BASA. What are your expectations as we prepare for a new administration on May 29? Well, uh, not just in aviation, the ease of doing business is na in Nigeria is very, very, um, I don't know, I, uh, it's not something we should celebrate. This government, when they came to power in 2015, made it a point of duty to make sure the ease of doing business. I think it was uh, uh, the vice president that, uh, it was anchored in the, in, the, in the office of the vice president then. At first, things were working, but uh, after some time, um, issues that nose dived. It has to be improved. You bring in, for example, in aviation spare parts on AOG basis, aircraft on ground all over the world. You don't need to pay before you take that part out because an aircraft is treated like a human being. So an aircraft on ground is like dying, so you need to resuscitate it immediately. All over the world, you bring in these parts, you take them out immediately and make sure uh, that the aircraft is flying. Over here, sometimes you bring it in and that part might be there for another two weeks. The aircraft is grounded for those two weeks, so a lot of revenue. 
Sometimes there's this one they call, um, uh, the one that has to do with the Office of the National Security Advisor. It has to do with some dangerous parts on the airplane. Like some parts of the plane could be termed explosive. So you need an um, end user certificate. I remember one of my airplanes being on ground for two months before we were able to get there to bring in the parts. So things like that shouldn't happen. There are so many, what about the airport infrastructure? They need improvement. This regime has tried, they opened some airports and other, but there are still more for the incoming government to do. And um, that is it. I don't want to dwell on the other challenges like uh, uh, too many charges being uh, airlines go through to, uh, to sustain their operations. Too many charges. It's not a profitable business, but it takes your passion. And um, some of us are in it because I just want to give service, I want to create jobs for people. I'm not really interested in what comes up. I take from other businesses to fund APs. My happiness is when I see this over 5,000 faces, you know, having a means of livelihood from the platform one has created. That's what makes us happy. And I speak for other airlines too. The owners of the other airlines are not making anything, but it takes their passion. In AON, you find the most um, uh, patriotic Nigerians because what they are giving out, they are just spreading their God's given word for everybody to, to use. So we deserve some understanding here. You're a businessman, and I know that you're not in business, despite being very altruistic, you're not in business to just help. You also want to make some money. So I'm hoping that, as you've suggested, the federal government will partner with business owners like yourself to create an enabling business environment. But finally, before we go, I wanted to go back to the question I asked in terms of how can people access, um, in terms of Sudan for Nigerians there, is there a special, do you already have the people whom you're evacuating, or is there a way they can contact your office or those who would wait for your um, jets to come in on Thursday, Friday? The Nigerian embassy in, um, in, in Cairo um, is working with the, um, the evacuees. Uh, they've sent buses down. Uh, they, they, call, they have the numbers over there. Remember, they're outside the country. They're not in Nigeria. So uh, a piece of my job is just to they just tell me the airport, and I send in the jets there. But the Nigerian embassy uh, in Cairo is in close contact with all the evacuees. They know where to assemble. They know how, they've already gotten into the buses, and I think they're on their way now to, as I said yesterday night, they were on their way to, um, to the border, Egyptian border. Uh, this morning we were discussing, I don't think the flight will be from Cairo, it might be uh, an airport uh, closer to the, the border. Uh, what I want to find out, I've talked to the DG Nema this morning, I want to find out if the airport they want to use will be able to land my jumbo jet, the 777. The 777 does not land in just any airport. It must be um, an airport with a very long runway and with uh, commensurate facilities, infrastructure. So the moment we get that, uh, we have to uh, go to the press and uh, announce that. But for now, their contacts will be with the Nigerian mission in, um, in Cairo. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Alan Oyema, founder and chairman of Epis Airline, for joining us on The Morning Show.